It's good to be with you again. The text for tonight or for today is Luke 16 verses 19 through 31. I was 15 years old and I went down during the invitation hymn at our church and I told my pastor that I felt called to preach. No flapping of angels' wings, no voice of God, simply an impression inside of my life that this is what God was calling me to do. I didn't expect my pastor to say, what you need to do if you feel called to preach is start preaching right away. 15 years old, and I hardly knew anything about preaching. And my minister was saying, I want you to preach. A few unsuspecting churches that, by the way, never invited me back. But most of all, my early preaching experience was at the Miami Rescue Mission in downtown Miami, Florida. Men off the streets, lining up, coming in to get a sandwich and soup and a cot to spend the night. They probably didn't know that before they were able to get their meal in their bed, they had to listen to me preach. I remember it was the second time that I preached at the Miami Rescue Mission that something happened that has never happened again in my ministry. Three or four minutes into the sermon, a man raised his hand. He had a question. I tried to talk louder thinking he would put his hand down, but he kept his hand up. Finally, I said, do you have something that you want to say? And I will never forget. He looked at me and he said, who are you to come here to speak to people like me? I didn't understand at the time exactly what he was saying. I'm not even sure that I gave him an answer. At that point, the primary thing was to stay on my feet and finish the sermon. But the question the man asked me that night, who are you to preach to people like me or to preach to anybody for that matter? Who are you? And for all of my ministry, that question has haunted me as I've been a preacher and as I've taught preaching. Who are you? Who am I to try to speak the words of God into the lives of people, particularly people whose lives I really didn't understand? It took a while for me to learn that if I were going to preach on hope, which I was doing that second night, I had to understand something first. I had to understand what it was to be hopeless. Here I was sharing a few bromides about hope. Basically, the content of most of my sermons at that point was shape up in your life and follow Jesus. No understanding of what this person was facing in his life. Who are you? And it dawned on me later on as I reflected on that, I was speaking to people who were broken speaking to people who are addicted. Did these people have any family or any family that cared for them? Did their family even want them to come around 
anymore? Was there any kind of hope in their lives? Or was it just a bleak future, one day after another, one night after another? Who are you? In the text to, that we're reading, it is about the story of a rich man and a man by the name of Lazarus. Not the Lazarus in the Gospel of John, the brother of Martha and Mary, but another Lazarus. What we know about him was that he was in the street, outside of the gate of a rich man. A great sense of hopelessness in his life, his body covered with sores, probably unable to move. Stray dogs would come by licking the sores on his body. And he would say to himself, as he looked at the home of the rich man, if only I had a crumb that could fall, that fell from the table. The rich man. When I read this story, I immediately think about the hopelessness of Lazarus in the street outside of the gate of the rich man. But I'm not sure that maybe inside the big house of the wealthy man, there also wasn't some brokenness and some loneliness. When you have a lot of things, you're never really sure whether people love you for what you have or love you for who you are. The fact is, never once did he offer anything to this homeless man on the street. Lazarus. This is a parable. This is a story that Jesus told. Let's remember when Jesus told parables and stories, he was telling them to his disciples and to people like you and like me. In fact, we are readers of the parable. Jesus didn't stand outside the gate of the rich man yelling, I want you to hear this story. Jesus was talking to people like you and me. Sometimes when we read these stories, we think to ourselves, I'm not rich. I can take myself out of this parable. But the fact is that most of us, most of us are wealthy compared to so many people across our world. No time for anybody to stop to tell this man, Lazarus, I care about you. Maybe he was afraid he would catch something. Maybe he was afraid that if he got too close, something would happen to him. Maybe sometimes, you and I are afraid. I was afraid that night, 15 years old. Who are you? Who am I? As a pastor, a woman sitting out there who has just lost her husband, do I know how to empathize with that? A couple sitting in the back. 
she had smelled perfume on his shirts after a trip he made. And she was just broken and lonely and hurting. And she was looking at me saying, do you have any word of hope? Who am I? Who are you? I always remember that wonderful poem that Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote called, Who Am I? He was in a Nazi concentration camp in Flossenburg. He died just as the allies were coming to liberate the camp. He wrote this poem about who am I? The last line, whoever I am, oh God, thou knowest that I am yours. That's the message of hope. Holding on to hope in our world. Amen.